Hello and welcome to the Critic Uculus. I'm a monk and today we are in Crusader Kings 3, picking up where we left off in the last episode. We are in our Beginner's Guide Let's Play series and we're on episode 6 now. In the last episode we had so much going on. It was a full-on episode and to be fair I was kind of glad that it ended when it did. Um, we had a lot of bad things happen to us. The person that we actually started the game with finally died. We had to manipulate a way to get a heir that was going to be a better option. And that's what we are have right now. And um, this was the guy that we kind of manipulated our way to. And that's who we are, are playing as. Now we do have two wars being waged against us right now. One in which we're already winning, which is nice. is a war that we were defending um, and we had our allies come in. Luckily for us, we got those allies because had we not got those allies when we did, we would be in serious trouble right now. Um, so we're going to try and continue to play through, hopefully stabilize the kingdom. Did I fail to mention the civil war we're currently under as well? Are we possibly about to lose the entirety of England? That's a problem. Um, but yeah, so that's where we are. So if you are interested in Crusader Kings content, guys, then this is where it is. I'm doing a, a series of videos for console, um, trying to cover everything I can, especially when it comes to updates and small mechanics within the game that perhaps it doesn't talk about. Um, but if that is what you're interested in, then don't forget to hit that like button. And of course, subscribe to the channel. We also have an active and growing Discord. We're trying to get more people within the community in the Discord so we can help each other out and possibly share some of our crazy stories that happen. One of the things I love most about Crusader Kings um, 3 is that no two playstyles or playthroughs are ever the same. Um, this game's massively RNG. You cannot control what happens. And so every playthrough is going to be different. I could play as this character a hundred times and every playthrough would be different. Um, and I quite like that. But anyway, we do have some issues right now. Um... This war is particularly worrying to me because this is the claim of the Kingdom of England. Um, so yeah, I definitely would like to win this one. We are currently outnumbered in troops, which isn't good for us. And we don't have a particularly great commander, I don't think. Let's have a look. Actually, do you know what? He's actually a lot better than... I thought he was with the 21 there. He's also a skilled tactician, which is great. He is also a fodder and he is a holy warrior. So there's some, he has some good things about him to be fair. And so we do have a good, we do have a good commander, but still we are lacking in troops. And um, when it comes to knights, we only have seven of those. That could be a problem. We was running with a lot more, but yeah. So what are we going to do? I think it would be a good idea. There we go. Yeah, looking at this, I think what we're going to do, we're going to offer white peace. I know we're winning. I know we're winning this war, so it does seem a bit weird. But I'm not sure we've got the time to win both wars. So this one's not so important. He was attacking me. He's going to agree to give up or could agree to give up. So we're going to offer white peace. I think that's the right thing to do. Um, if that goes through, it means our allies will be free. We will then get all those allies to focus on the Mercia troops. Um, and hopefully, hopefully it'll be a lot more manageable. Uh, we need to fill up a couple of council positions by the looks of it too. So let's see who we can do or what we can do. That's one of our, um, one of our powerful vassals. Not a powerful vassal. Uh, Prince of Ragnar. Let's go on organized levies. I think that's more important right now. And I think we'll also do a sway scheme on him because I don't like the fact that he's minus to us right now. I think I'm also going to get, as he has quite a high one, I think I'm going to go look for some secrets. Again, we are planning ahead. We don't need these right now. But I think we're going to go for here. 
which is Smallland, which is potentially another ally. I mean, he's not allied with us right now. I don't think we can ally because we're all at war. He's at war. Um, but yeah, I would like to keep certain allies. And when it comes to talking about allies, though, again, that's a that's a conversation. Because if we look around us, we have a lot of Catholics. We have a lot of Catholics and strong, powerful Catholic nations. Um, that's worrying slightly. If we, yeah, look at these. All of these are Catholics. That's really worrying. Um, because we're not Catholic and we're occupying land that possibly should be Catholic. So when it comes to getting these alliances, I think we're going to have some issues. Because um, we do need alliances throughout this game. And like I said, yeah, I think we're going to have some issues when it comes to that. We also have two factions that we have to look at as well. I wonder... Ooh, we've got no chance of imprisoning. Killing people isn't necessarily great. We could get a hook. Hmm. Fabricate a hook. And then with the hook, we can use that to send them to jail. Instead of finding secrets, hooks can be fun. I think we might do that. Fabricate a hook. It's going to take a little minute, but we'll try that. Swaying her is probably important too, but I think having having our spy master like us for me right now is more important. So we're going to focus on that a little bit. Let's look at suggestions. Hitting that hints is always helpful. Got a couple of prisoner ransoms. Who have we got as a prisoner? Let's grab a favor off of him. And who is this? Okay, we're going to get money off of her. And take a concubine. Do we not have it in concubines? Oh, we got a princess. Princess of East Francia. That's interesting. Can't ransom. Okay, because they're already considering a proposal. And apparently they're unimportant. Interesting. Let's go to negotiate release. And... As we see, she currently has five claims. So we're going to try and recruit. Gain a weak hook. And I think that's a good idea. Yeah, I think that's that's definitely a good idea. So let's see how this turns out. Oh, one minute. Did unpause the game there, but I made a mistake because I forgot to look at lifestyle and see what I could do there. I have one point to kind of pop on. Seduction could be cool. Could be helpful. But I think as I already have truce relative, I'm going to go for Swiss, swift execution. So that puts up the power of our murder schemes a little bit, which I quite like. And now we are here working towards our first perk, which I think we do befriend. Or defensive negotiations. Better allies, stronger allies. I like the idea of that. I'm still, I'm in an RN. I really feel like I should convert to the Catholic Church. Do they have access to Crusader Wars? That's the question. Because if they have access to Crusades, then I could possibly be one of their first targets. And I don't want that. Um, let's see, reform other religions, click here, become a Catholic, convert to faith. Uh, we have one. Oh, we only have one vessel th that would actually convert with us anyway. And we don't actually even have enough, um, Piffy to get that underway so hmm 
we could raise a runestone to our grandfather. And if we do that, we have the correct Piffy. Hmm. I wonder, we have enough now. Is it something we want to do? I think I was all up for it right up until I saw just how many people or, or, of my vessels wouldn't con convert. They wouldn't convert, but now they do. That's interesting. So if you saw then when I um when I went to raise that runestone, what actually happened is it increased the relation of all the vessels under, you know, that were the same religion. It increased their opinion of me by 10. And because it increased their opinion of me by 10, we now have all those vassals that are willing to to convert. So that's kind of cool. We do have probably more that aren't, but we got old Ragnar. So that works. I think I'm going to go for it. I think we're going to convert. We'll see just how, how bad this could be. We do also have the church not endorsing us, which is potentially problematic. Again, that's going to be something we need to sort out. Um, but we can only do one thing at a time, right? Or so many things at a time. I say this, but we are 11 minutes in without unpausing a game. So there we go. We've got another weak hook. There is currently a crusade going on. I've just disbanded my troops. I know we're still waiting for that white piece. There we go. White piece is just activated. And we got Helena. That's Kushti. Um, so now we're just in that one war. We're still currently outnumbered, which isn't fun. Um, in fact, if you look, we've actually reduced in troops. And I know exactly why that is too. We've reduced in troops because this guy doesn't like us currently. Absolute git. Maybe he's more important than I gave him credit for. Okay, we're going to go back to the spy master. But yeah, that's kind of annoying. Anyway, do we have our council member recruit in levies? Yes. Now what we can do is get our allies to help us out with the civil war. They help out in civil wars as well, as well as defensive wars, which is Kushti. Uh, but now they can focus. And they've got, a, you know, it's a decent um, load of troops there. So if we wait for them to come in, also hopefully wait for our levies to go up a little bit. There we go. I can see them up here. They've got a few. They've got 3,000 troops on the board. Where's our levies? There they are. Yeah, well, our levies are very low. Don't like that at all. But we are getting our troops back, so... We are up to 1,100 troops right now. Kind of just waiting for our allies to swing in here. Hopefully it will happen soon. Let's fast forward that time. We're going to lose a little bit of gold. There we go. There's our defenses. Nice. Nice to see it. And they've already won a war, which is pretty tasty. Let's also pause that real quick and see if we have any more prisoners that we can sort out. We have... have a favor from this guy he was the guy we were just at war with i believe
we up on our levies yet? Not really. Levies aren't going up that much. There we go. They're going up slowly. Very, very slowly. But they are going up. But yeah, that's a lot slower than I wanted. We're up to 1,200 troops now, though. Almost 1,300 troops. And our allies are going to stay there until we're raised. So I think now's going to have to be the time. So we're going to raise our troops. Where are they? There they are. And now let's move them down here. Hopefully our allies will come down with us. There we go. Look, as soon as we were on the board, they started coming our way. Uh, and now we're going to start gambling. Are they close enough to actually help in this battle? I don't know. I hope so. There we go. Look at that. It paid off. It paid off. We won the war. Well, I say we won the war. We didn't win the war. We won the battle. Um, our allies did manage to come in and help, which is brilliant. And we stopped them from taking that county. Now we need to try and take some land either back or take on their capital. Taking out their capitals are definitely going to be the way to go to finish this war. Um, but let's see if we're going to quickly take some of this land that they're already occupying. Kind of undo some of the points they've already scored. We pause the game really quickly when they do that. I'm scanning around for their troops. I see these 2,000 troops here, which might be all they are. However, they are outmatching us, so we do need to be a bit careful. There we go. Our allies came in for that as well. Again, we won. We are now winning this war, which is... Nice, we've beaten them in battle twice, don't forget. You do earn more points from those battles than you do um, from captures, but capturing capitals is very important. So let's start grabbing up some land. They're going to try and stop us. That was a bit silly of them. And they're, they're, they're trying to get that bit back again. There we go. Pause that right. And now we're actually matching them in troops. So it shouldn't matter whether the allies actually go our way or not. I'm going to pause up here real quick. There we go. We're winning this. This is a slow win, but are we going to win it? We are. Yeah, we go for that. We get the prestige. We're going to need that later anyway. Where are we looking with this war? Pretty good. We've been called into help, but yeah, we're doing very well here. We're looking low on troops, however, which is problematic. Apparently we already, I don't remember conquering that. Perhaps our allies did. In which case, we probably need to look at capturing Cornwall. We're very close to their military power now, though. Oh, no, they beat us. No. Oh, no, we, we had our, our first loss, which is not good. Not good at all. Not only have we got our first loss now, but they're probably going to be trying to chase. Let's 
yeah our allies are uh do we don't have any more allies to call now either we're kind of in a pickle for sure there we go we've got our troops coming back let's see if we can grab some money up There we go. I think these guys are already in this, so they're not going to be able to be called. Oh, we've got allies coming back in, which is actually a good thing. I was a little bit worried, not going to lie. Tell you what, we'll take out Cornwall, like I said. Like I said, taking out capital is going to be better. I can actually see who's here for my war as opposed to the other war that's going on currently. So these 2,000 troops are for me, okay. We have got three months on this, though. Two months now. And where are we on this? We are so close. Let's see. We are 91%. Let's move up here and see what we can do. See if these allies come with us. If we can maneuver them into battle again with us, then we can win this, which is what we want. Oh, it looks like he's waiting for us, doesn't it? Um, terrain. No, he's waiting for us in wetland. That doesn't really give him an advantage. At least I don't think so. Let's try this. Let's see how this battle goes. We won. We're being called to war again, though. But with that win, we should have won now. We have won. Okay, that's Kushti. So what did we get from that? So it means the Duke of Mercia leaves the faction. Uh, he cannot rejoin another faction for 10 years. We also get to imprison him. I also imprison another Duke too. And again, I think that's good. I think that's good. I think on a whole, um, this is going to work out really well for us because we had that problem with the Duke of Mercia. Constantly have that problem with him. But he, you know, he's kind of gone in. He's revolted against us. He pressed his claims and he's come up short, which is great. So we're going to enforce the demands. That war is no longer a thing, which is fantastic for us. We do need to work on those. We've been called into aid to allies, so that's going to be something we will need to look at in a minute. But for right this second, I would say that is a huge, huge win. We had a quite a major victory over, um, over a faction that could have been done us a lot of harm there. And to be quite honest, I thought we were going to lose at one point. How are we looking with our council? We need to get a new steward. Our uncle, kind of the troublemaker as well, the little git. Um, <laughs> can't be angry at Prince Monk, right? Uh, there we go, our courtier. Isn't he family? I swear he's family. Yeah, yeah. A dynasty member. Might be a good idea to find him a wife, to be fair. He is a genius, after all. 
don't think we're going to get anywhere when it comes to alliance power, but we'll get him a wife because he didn't have one. Are we still swaying? Because this guy needs, we need better relations with him. He's going to affect our levies. And now let's go to the prisoners. Oh, we can designate. Um, we'll do that. But yeah, the prisoners, where is he? There he is. Is that the guy? No, that's not the one. He's the guy. He's the one that's been a pain in the ass. So let's have a look at him real quick. He did lose, which is, you know, that's his problem. But we can get him to renounce claims. And if we get him to renounce claims, then he can come back to being, you know, a duke. And he also, for the next 10 years, he can't come into any kind of faction as well. If we get him on board, we've got a positive member there. He's, you know a young-ish age so he can come in and be a powerful vassal and operate now with kind of a clear head. He knows he can never go for those claims again. So for me, I think that's actually a good option. Um, I, we try it. Can we get a weak hook as well? We, he says no. He's a gear. We could banish him. Um, but yeah, we can't do both. So yeah, I think renouncing his claims, his claims are gone now for good. I like that option. And what about this guy? He has two claims as well. Let's see if we can get him to renounce his claims. Yeah, negotiate release. Of course, I could have just beheaded them. I mean, that's fun for the environment, right? Renounce claims. He's happy to renounce claims too. Okay, I'm happy with that. Just have them renounce claims. That way they're not going to go up against me again. At least not for those claims. Not for those reasonings. And I think that works good. Who is he? Oh, we're currently at war. That's, that's one of the allies I'm supposed to be helping him, but I have very little troops. Let's just get some money for that. I have very little troops. Let's see what we're up against. Oh, okay. He doesn't need, doesn't exactly need help, which is probably why he's walking it. That's this little battle here. There we go. Unpause the game and let everything roll in. We just fabricated a hook. I didn't mean to. I was going to go to the other option. I'm trying to get friendlier relations with the area. I think fabricating hooks can be seriously underrated. When it comes to fabricating hook, you can get weak hooks and strong hooks. But the most important part of that is that you can kind of just let it go. You're kind of letting them know that you have this thing on them. And you're saying, actually, do you know what? You're good. And, you know, you can get relations with um, with different uh, countries that way really easily if you manage to grab a load. Obviously, we've got quite a good um, spy master, which is why we've, we've been able to get what we've got so far. move our troops up here disband kushti and we do need to get out of the red we are currently um losing money which we don't want to do get another 25 quid
And we'll be an arts to help again. A third one. So all of this over here. And this, this and this. Loads. Hopefully, we will start getting positive relations soon by um, by our priest, and that way we can start asking for money through the Catholic Church. I do like the Catholic Church, to be fair. Oh, okay. So, having a minute breakdown, but we have a chance to get the athletic perk. I really like that. I think that's a good one to get. So, I think we'll go for that. How are we doing? How are we doing? Uh, we're 105, so as soon as we get some money, we do need to kind of reduce that. Being stressed affects fertility as well, and of course can lead to death, which isn't fun for anyone. Um, I never actually looked at his traits either, at what he's got. He's very good at intrigue, which is interesting. Um, We've just picked that up. Diligent is bad, 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 bad. I don't like it. I mean, yeah, we, I mean, look at all these extra things. That's brilliant. But uh, the reason I don't like it is that extra stress gain. I really think that stress is something that needs to be, um, needs to be worked on. You need to be mindful of it because you can, you can have an early death through stress, which I don't like. Also, I like the fact that we did go over to becoming a Catholic and compassionate is one of its, uh, its virtues. So we're actually getting extra piffy because of it, which is fantastic. However, however, we also have gluttonous, which is a sin. So we're that's kind of gone against us there, which kind of sucks. Definitely a sin. It's actually one of the worst traits in the game, gluttonous. It's kind of a shame that we've got it, but it is what it is. And I do think that we done the better thing by, you know, moving this guy as our player heir. Oh, the prince becomes our friend. Friends are fantastic because when you have a, you know, a friend, they can't go against you. So, yeah, I like that. We're going to go for that. We're going to have, have him as a friend. Let's see what else pops up. No, definitely don't convert. I just think this one's so funny. How dare you challenge your king? I think we're doing okay now. Our levies are coming back, which is Kushti. These guys can't really come back in until we get some more money. Um, so we will be looking to get more money. We're close now. We just have to kind of let time pass. And once it passes, we'll be, we'll be Kushti. But yeah, I think we've actually done a pretty good job um, in this playthrough, to be fair, or in this episode, because at the beginning of this episode, there was some, there was, it really didn't look likely that we could have won or even managed to keep England together like we did in the end. So I'm really glad that we did have that forgiving. Oh, gain some wrath. So this is our heir. Fickle. We're going to gain stress, which is one of the problems with stress management. But um, our character gaining Rafal is good. I like Rafal. And it's a lot better than forgiving. I 
so we'd go for we'd go for raffle or raffle traits. And once we actually get the money that we that we need, it's it's going to be interesting. We're going to have to look at um, conquering a little bit more land. He becomes our best friend, or I lose some stress. I think we'll lose stress. So we, we need to be doing some more things where we're losing stress for sure. Oh, you're going to lose, my friend. Unless somebody helps you out. I don't know who that somebody could be with the 1,700 troops. <laughs> but unless somebody helps you out, you could lose, my friend. And we also need to be working on our alliances as well. As soon as we get um, a little bit more money, a little bit more time, maybe even a few more heirs, hopefully we stop becoming stressed and we can actually start pumping out some babies. That would be fantastic. We are, we've lost our concubines because we, you know, we switched over. Um, but we also need to have this betrothal happen as well. So we, like I said, so we can start having some more heirs. When we have more heirs, we can obviously go for some more alliances, which will be fantastic. Um, talking about more alliances, though, I actually forgot that we've been doing lifestyle. There we go. Defensive negotiations. Brilliant. So we can actually start having... Um, Alliances without marriage being involved, meaning in my situation right now where I don't have many people to kind of marry off, I can't really get as many alliances, but this way I can. So I've been waiting for that. Let's see what else have we got. We've got one more perk. Let's spend this perk. Each alliance grants you extra, which could be useful. Like I said, if we had a huge family, we'd be able to do in a lot of little alliances. Shorter truces, that could be really good for conquering more land, but we kind of need to do a little bit of a rebuild right now. Again, that one's not so useful to us right this second. Sway schemes could be useful. We always need to make someone happy. But I think having a friend, I think the more of our powerful vassals um, that we can get to become our friend, the better, because when they're our friends, they can't join factions, which means we can't have civil wars. So I quite like that option. So there we go, guys. I think we're going to leave it here. So we have managed to win both the wars we we were in at the beginning of this episode. And we've kind of stabilized England in the sense that, um, you know, Mercia are no longer a threat, which is fantastic. And, uh, and yeah, so here we are. We kind of have a stabilized... Um, unite or stabilized England uh, anyway we still haven't quite taken out Mercia and there's still a little bit more land that we need to take out um, but I think we've done what we set out to do guys so if you want to see this playthrough continue and if you want to see an episode seven eight and nine then let me know down in the comments if you want to see this continue because I'm quite happy to have this be you know the creation of Britain the empire of Britain it's going to be tricky, especially with Alba being where they are. Um, but I would quite like to continue this playthrough. So, you know, let's see it do well. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Like the video. Comment your thoughts um, about what's kind of happened throughout the playthrough. And I'll do my very best to, to reply back to each and every one of you guys. And uh, thank you so much for watching. If you have, fantastic. Great way to help the channel. And until next time, guys, I will see you in the next video. Until then, happy gaming.